We're now getting a new look inside that Russian spy ring that included surveillance footage of Anna Chapman and her activities. Eric O'Neill is a former FBI operative who certainly has helped capture a few spies himself. So, Eric, let's talk a little bit about one of these new reports just out today that some members of this spy ring were actually getting close to some very high profile government officials, maybe even cabinet members. What do you make of that? Sounds like exactly what they were sent here to do. If you're going to embed uh, a number of spies in our culture under what we call legends, or uh, these are Russians who are living the life of Americans, they're your spies next door, then uh, they certainly want to attack or seek information from the highest levels that they can reach. In conclusion of this bust, we traded these individuals. We're seeing one on our screen and seeing this, this uh, video just for our viewers. You can see these men have similar bags. They switch hands and they move on. Supposedly there's cash in those bags. Eric, we actually did a major swap exchanging these 10 individuals for others from Russia. Uh, why did we do that? You know, I'm still trying to scratch my head over that one. I, I think that the swaps are nice because we can get some people back home that the Russians have captured in this case. But on the other side, I think it would have been very important to interrogate uh, those individuals and, uh, and find out what they'd done so we can uh, fix anything that they'd done wrong. So we caught 10. How many more are there? Well, we've caught 10, and there are plenty more out there. Anywhere there is information uh, that is useful to someone else, there's going to be a spy. They're always in the worst possible place, in government and in corporations, and just about anywhere where they can take information that's going to assist their company or their country. Who are the best spies? Are the Russians on the top of that list still? I mean, when you think about spy, you think about the Cold War, you, you might get these different scenarios, but they can't be the only ones. Well, personally, I'd like to say our CIA are the best spies out there. It's probably the best uh, answer. Yeah, that's right. Well, the, uh, and uh, the Russians are certainly up there. They, uh, they have made spycraft part of their culture, and, uh, and they are very zealous in, uh, in actively trying to spy on other countries. As far as our own spies, how active are we in other countries at this time? Well, I don't want to say too much, but we're certainly active in trying to protect our interests. And, uh, and our work overseas is part of our domestic protection. Um, we need to know what's going to happen uh, from sources overseas in order to protect ourselves here in the United States. You know, Anna Chapman was, was browsing at Macy's in New York. She was at a Starbucks. So they're just kind of living regular lives, Eric. I mean, that's, you can't really make them out from, as you mentioned, your, your neighbor. Exactly. Think about it. If you're a spy, you want to be covert. You want to blend in. You don't want to be the flashy James Bond person with the martini at the bar. You want to be the mousy, uh, nondescript person standing somewhere in the background, blending into the crowd. So they shop. And they go to coffee shops and they do things like the video you showed where they're uh, passing information in a very nondescript and very hard to catch way. Next time I want you to give me some tips on how to catch spies. I want to know how to do it. Out of all those people at the Starbucks, I want to know which one's a Russian spy. Eric, thank you very much. We appreciate your expertise and uh, well, we'll keep on following uh, this spy story. Thank you. And thanks for having me. All right.